Hello, my name is Chloe, welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing to you the books I have unhauled lately. So, welcome to my channel if you're new, but welcome back to another unhaul video. And I am actually changing up how I do these videos after this one. This one has kind of made me realize how I wanna do it differently. So what I have been doing for perhaps the last year, year and a half, I wouldn't go as far as two years, is rather than holding all my books for an unhaul and then filming a video, I just kind of unhaul them as I read them and decide they, they're going or do an unhaul, sell them on Vinted, upload them to Zip It, and then I do the video when I filled a page in my journal. This page I started on the 10th of December and I'd actually finished it by the start of April, just pretty much through books I'd read and then didn't need anymore. Most of these have already gone out of my collection and I've decided for the sake of content content, <laughs> I now have a full library in my apartment. I have a book room. So I have the storage space to hold an unhaul until I get time to film the video. I'm now going to stop uploading books to Vinted as soon as I'm finished with them. And the only reason they're going to leave my collection is if they're going to like a friend or something. So from now on, if I have a book that I'm unhauling, it will go in the stack and I will do a video where I show you all of the books. However, we can't do that for today because I have already unhauled most of these books. I have four that I can physically hold up. Speaking of, if you are interested in any of these four, they are all listed on my Vinted, so make sure you are following me. I will link it down in the description for you. Or drop me a message on any social medias or my email or whatever, and I will be able to talk to you about them. So let's go through the books that I actually don't have as well. So the first one I unhauled is One by One by Ruth Ware. This was the December crime scene corner pick. Yes, it was. It was the December pick for Chloe's Crime Scene Corner. And I just didn't love it. So this was a, an adult mystery thriller. I've got a very up and down relationship with, with Ruth Ware. She's written my probably my favourite thriller ever, which is The Turn of the Key. And then I also hate things she's written like The Woman in Cabin 10. So this one just wasn't all that exciting. I read it, I didn't hate it, but I didn't need to keep it on my shelves. Next up we have The Book of Living Secrets by Madeline Rue, I think. And I had this one as an arc from Harper 360 YA. I listened to the audiobook and it just wasn't really my cup of tea. So somebody on Facebook actually traded me a um, finished copy of another book I wanted in exchange for the arc. So it all worked out well in the end. I did read the book, just didn't love it. It's kind of along the same vein as The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. So if you liked that book, you might like this one. Next up, we have Murder in the Family by Cara Hunter. And I definitely didn't hate this one, but it's just not another that I needed on my shelves. This is a um, mystery thriller told in mixed media. And it was one of those where I feel like when you know the answer, you don't need to read it again because I did actually guess what the um, story was within the first 20 pages. So I just feel like I would also work it out again on reread and I just wouldn't enjoy the twists and turns to get to that point. That one actually went to the mother-in-law because then I have a list of books here that I read while I was in the US. Um, so all of these are ones that I left behind. The first one is In a Holiday. No, it's not. In a Holidays. Did I get rid of In a Holidays? It seems like I got rid of In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. I did, I did give it to the mother-in-law. I read this on the plane um, and I read the whole thing between taking off in Birmingham, going to Dublin, and then it was about an hour into the flight from Dublin to Chicago that I finished the book. Sped through it, really great Christmas romance. Um, loved it. Just, I guess, not one I'm gonna pick up all the time. I couldn't see myself picking it up again next Christmas, so I didn't see the point in holding on to it. We then have In Five Years by Rebecca Searle, which I thought was a Christmassy book. It's not really. About two of the pages are set on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, and this is like a time travel romance. Not perhaps time travel, but our main character has a dream that she is in five years in the future, and she's engaged to someone she doesn't know, and it's a really good little story. I did love this one, but I just didn't want to carry the physical book back. Um, I am not regretting that choice, but I will be on the search for a good copy because mine was a little dinged up and, and not perfect. So I would like a fresh copy, but I'm not going to seek it out. Just if it falls into my hands, I will have it. Next up, we have Wreck the Halls by Tessa Bailey, which was a gift from the lovely Marlene. And um, she gifted me that for... Christmas? Yes, for Christmas. So then I took it over to the States to be one of my Christmas reads and 
I do like Tessa Bailey, but Wreck the Halls didn't do it for me. Um, so I read it, left it for the mother-in-law to try. Next up we have The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox, which is an interesting one because I did really like this book. It's just out of my reach up here, but I actually went on and bought a book of the month copy of the book from somebody on the American version of Vinted. There's one just for books, Pango Books. Um, I bought a copy of that book because I really loved it and I could see myself reading it every Christmas. Um, at that point, I had already decided I was unhauling it and didn't need it. So I'd given it to the mother-in-law and then I was like, I can't really ask for it back. So I bought myself a book of the month copy. So this is an unhaul, but I still have a copy. It's just a new copy. Next up, we have The Dragon's Bride by Katie Roberts. So these books are now starting when I'm back in England at the start of this year. This was a monster romance with a dragon. I don't feel like I need to tell you anymore. I didn't love it. I wasn't gonna read it again, but I really appreciated Ali who got me this book so that I could give it a go, um, but I didn't need to read it again. So I unhauled it. Similarly, Wet Hot Allosaurus Summer by Lola Faust. If you have not heard me talk about this book, I will link the vlog where I just read this book down in the description and explain to you what this book is about. Um, oh, it sucked, but thank you, Emily, for letting me try it. But this was Dinosaur Romance, if you can call it that. We then have The Fill-In Boyfriend by Casey West. This was a perfectly fine YA romance. It was cute. It just wasn't one I needed to keep on my shelves forever. Then I actually unhauled a copy of The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. So I had two copies of this book and when I, I didn't actually. When I started this unhaul list, I only had one copy, which is the copy I unhauled. And then when I was in America, I found a hardback copy and it's in pretty much perfect condition. I do need to get some of the sticker residue off, nearly threw it. Um, but yeah, it's in pretty perfect condition. And I always wanted to get myself a hardback of this. This book is the first one that I read in like knowing that I just had to read a book instantly and wouldn't put it down. I read it from my flight to, from Birmingham to Spain as a teenager. And then while I was in the car, um, we'd already come from the airport, like everyone's excited because we're on holiday and I am sobbing my like eyes out. So wanted to get a hardback copy, found it in Goodwill. I'm pretty sure it was like $3, no $2.49. Um, so I grabbed it and I unhauled my paper copy to somebody who's never read it, which I find very exciting. Next up, we have The X Talk by Rachel Lynn Solomon. And sadly, I just didn't like this book. It's an adult romance. It's an enemies to lovers. It just didn't do anything for me. So that one was unhauled. Then we have The Sanatorium by Sarah Pierce. This was another Chloe's Crime Scene Corner pick. And sadly, this one didn't do it for me either. This is an abandoned sanatorium turned into a hotel. And the setting was much more exciting than the actual story. I had a pretty cool hardcover copy, sprayed edges and everything. So just decided to pass it on to somebody who would prefer it. Then the first book I can hold up is The It Girl by Ruth Ware. This was the Patreon um, TBR jar pick for December and I read it in January and sadly it just didn't really do much for me. This was a gift from Amy so thank you again Amy. Um, it is actually a signed copy which is mad but um, yeah I just didn't really, nothing drew me into this one. It was quite a boring one for Ruth Ware. It's set at Oxford or Cambridge University, I think Oxford. Um, I didn't really vibe with any of the characters, didn't really care about the mystery so that one was not a hit for me. We then have Run Rose Run by Dolly Parton and James Patterson, which was a very meh book. It really, really was. Um, I appreciate Dolly, I love Dolly, but I don't think her book writing is as up to par as her songwriting. And yeah, it, as soon as I read it, I knew it wasn't gonna be one I read again. So I unhauled. If I had a signed copy, that would have been different, but you know. Then we have Born Darkly by Trisha Wolfe. This was described as a very dark taboo romance. Didn't do anything for me, unfortunately. I feel like a lot of these books are just meh books. It's not like I had a big mass unhaul of the shelves. It's just books I read and, and didn't really vibe with. So I definitely didn't hate this book, but it wasn't that good. Then we have The 10,000 Doors of January by Alex E. Harrow. Um, this one I did actually dislike. I had an absolutely gorgeous copy. I'm so sad to see it go, but I really disliked one of the ways that pregnancy was discussed in this book. I, I really just didn't like what the author did with it. Um, and that kind of left a sour taste in my mouth for the rest of the book. So wasn't one I needed to read again. And the fantasy element, which is supposed to be the whole book, just wasn't that strong, I don't think. Then we have Beach Read by Emily Henry. I now have a history with Emily Henry books of rating them about three stars and not really feeling much about it. I know a lot of people love Beach Read. 
as I've said about all of these books, it just didn't do it for me. We then have The Mars Room by Rachel Kushner, which I'm not too sad about because it was a charity shop pick that I picked up quite a few years ago now. And it was a literary fiction kind of take on life in women's prisons and the um, experiences of women who are incarcerated, but told through a fictionalized story. It was fine. There we go, I said it once. We then have The Babysitter's Coven by Kate Williams, that took me a second, and I read this for Amy McCaw's book club. It was one of the oldest books on my TBR and I was so glad to finally get round to it, but um, I think I gave it 3.5 stars in the end, it just wasn't one that I'm ever going to reread. Then I have Bloom by Kevin Panetta. This was a graphic novel and I have found out, and I think this is the last one you're gonna see ever in an unhaul. Graphic novels are not my cup of tea. So this was a very cute story. I liked reading it, but I don't need to go to graphic novels anymore. I know they're not my thing. Then I have All These Bodies by Kendara Blake, which is a YA horror, apparently. Um, this was, it was like a murder mystery, but I do have like really air feelings about this now because if you want your murder mystery to um be resolved and the mystery be found out then don't read this book then we have deceived by the gargoyles by lillian lark this one was not what i expected it to be whatsoever this is another monster romance courtesy of ali and um it, it is it's what it says on the tin it's a gargoyle romance wasn't my thing then we have Avira Wong's Unsolicited Advice for Murderers by Jessie Satanto. I definitely didn't dislike this book. I think I gave it three and a half stars and it's just a very cozy mystery. Um, I did like it, but I knew I wasn't gonna read it again and Emily from Emily Kathleen Reads wanted to read it. So I passed my copy to her. Then I have Never Been Better by Leanne Toshiko Simpson. Sadly, I did not like this book. I was sent it for review. I did a post on Instagram with the book and what it was about but it wasn't a book for me, so I unhauled it pretty sharpish. Nearly there, the next book we have is uh, Bookish and the Beast by Ashley Poston. This is book three in the Geekerella series and uh, not my thing. <laughs> As I've said, this is apparently a geeky retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Didn't really quite feel that way to me. And looking back now, I just have no strong feelings about this book whatsoever. So I've unhauled the rest of this series and this one didn't do enough for me to hold it onto it, so it's gone. Then we have All That's Left in the World by Eric J. Brown. This is a YA dystopian story and this one I did like. I didn't dislike it at all but it was a dystopian story with a plague that had taken over the world but no zombies. I wanted zombies. Then we have Happy Endings by Thien Kim Lam. This was a gift from Marlene um, last Christmas, like not 23, 22. And this is a smutty adult romance. I was about to say it again, didn't do it for me. The smut was very clinical and that's all I really remember about this book. It has been a while since I finished it, but it just didn't, didn't wow me at all. So this one was a relatively negative review and has been unhauled. The penultimate book I have here is Kissing Emma by Shappy Corsandi. This one makes me relatively upset because Nina is not okay by this author is one of my favorite books of all time. But Kissing Emma just didn't really live up to Nina is not okay. I found that the story actually started about 50 pages from the end of this book. The pacing was really, really weird. It was a very moving story overall, but I don't think it was well written, unfortunately. And finally, we have We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. I was quite cautious about reading this one. It's actually, well, as it's at the bottom of the list, it's the most recent book I've read here. And I just don't know what I thought this book was gonna be. I've heard it pitched as a classic horror because yeah, Shirley Jackson. Um, but I actually found it was more of a literary fiction. I wasn't scared, creeped out, didn't find it mysterious in any way. Um, so I gave it two stars and it quickly was on Vinted. But there we have it, guys. That is the latest, let me count. That is the latest 30 books that I have unhauled. I hope the people who grabbed these books on Vinted really did enjoy um, getting them. And as I said, my book hauls are gonna change a little bit in the future and I'll actually be able to hold up all of the books and show you. I know it doesn't really make much of a difference to seeing it on screen, but just having it feels different. So these are actually the only ones I have left in my physical possession and they are just living next to my bookshelf until they find a future home. Let me know if you've unhauled any books lately, if you're doing a big unhaul, like sweep through your shelves. I'd love to see those kind of things. But for now, that's all I have time for. So thank you very, very much for watching this video. I really do hope you enjoyed and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Bye.